Start shaking, man. Right? Yeah, I used to get yeah, yeah. I don't want to hurt you. Left handed? What do you mean? Rock. Rock. Okay. Oh, wait. Rock, paper, scissors, rock, shoot. Paper, scissors, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> was there ever a time where you almost didn't post content in fear people would talk about you in a negative light? Um, yes. My first comedy show in Detroit, I was panicking. It's do or die, and yeah. I do really well. I've always done really well under pressure. But am I really funny, mm. or are they just big fans and they're laughing because they love me? I felt so defeated. I'm like, we're not doing enough. I can't do enough. And I threw my hands up in the air and I was like, that's it. So I aren't scared to hold back. Do you fear in moments of seriousness that people won't give you the seriousness that you are demanding? Today I have with me the go-to for a Syrian comedy. She goes by many names. You may know her as Yom, Yasmin, but everybody knows her as Ramina Rated. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for making the time. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so everybody knows you on social media, but the first time I ever saw Ramina Rated was in person at the youth conference that this past July. I'm leaving the formal party. It's midnight, and everyone's sweaty at that point. They just want to get back they to their so room. Sweaty. <laughs> oh my God, the, you know how it goes. I'm going back to the room, all of a sudden, I hear over the microphone your name announced. The doors open, you come in, all the youth attendees go crazy. They're screaming, they like surround you and they're taking pictures of you. I'm thinking to myself, at one point, she used to be one of these attendees. And now you're somebody that the attendees go crazy for. What's that like? It's weird. Yeah? I'm going to be honest with you. Really weird. Um, it's humbling. Uh, but I actually went there that night to meet a friend. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was asked by one of the Akash to come in. I had to, he, he was like, let me introduce you to this girl. He did a cameo for her. She's from Iraq. So I was like, oh, Lord, I'm in sweats. This is a youth party. Everybody's right. dressed to the nine. It's Ram Sanchino, Juliana Jindo, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm not really about to walk into this banquet right now, looking the way that I do. But I did. I couldn't say no to Akash. And uh, I walk in there, and, yeah, everybody kind of went crazy. And it's really surreal. I'm, I'm like, it's just me, but people are, don't know me for me. They know me as Romina Rated. Right and the funny videos, and they're excited to see me, so I'm like, all right, we just gotta yeah. roll with it. And it's so sweet, honestly. I think somebody cried, and that was the first time I've seen a girl cry. Like, really? Did you cry? <laughs> yeah, it was really sweet. But, um, yeah, it's surreal. It's yeah. surreal, but it's so humbling. It's a, that event, kind of like, it brings a lot of people together. Yes, it And does. from everywhere across the United States, and even yeah. Canada now they're coming. So that was a great thing to see, especially that you used to, used to be one of those people. Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay, I have a few questions for you, and I want to figure out who Ramina Rated is. So okay. let's get into it, right? So a lot of comedians, back when they were children, had a rough childhood upbringing. They had traumatic experiences, a sad life when they were younger, and then they used that to amplify their comedy when they grew up. They used life stories from when they were kids to create bits about it, sketches, and then uh, they use personal stories and people can relate to them. When you were younger, did you ever have any of those traumatic experiences or any of those situations that push you to lean on comedy as a form of escapism from reality, or no, is comedy a newfound passion for you? You know, I always joke about being a middle child and like kind of the kid that was like big mouth, troublemaker, could never do right. Um, and so I say like it's my group therapy, the, the videos are the group therapy, but I don't think there were, um, and thank God, um, terribly traumatic moments in my mm. childhood that led me to default to comedy. I think it's just I've always been funny. Yeah. Um, and I think a part of that is like trying to be seen and trying to be heard. Like, let me speak louder, let me be funnier um, in my family. So. Uh, but it just comes naturally to me, so I think that's where the comedy comes. My dad's also really funny, he's a good storyteller, so I feel like watching that growing up um, played a big part in, in, plays a big part in my comedy. Yeah, right okay. Now. But so were you it's a, a typical Middle Eastern trauma, right? Like, right. It's like the mom's really strict, and you can't go out with friends, and just uh, being a, a Middle Eastern woman, too, mm -hmm. there are a lot of restrictions on what we can and can't do, so... Um, it's playing on those, and you see that in my, you see those pop up in my videos. Right. Like the video that everybody loves, where I come out in like a super cleavagey shirt, and she's like, "Where do you think you're going?" Right. So it's like I literally pull from real life experiences uh, throughout my life, and right. they're totally relatable. 
So. Yeah, and other people watching them with similar upbringings yeah. can relate to them, which is why they enjoy them right. so much. Right. right. So you were saying that it, become, it comes naturally to you when you were younger, you were a little bit louder. So in school, elementary, yes. high school, were you yes. the class jokester? Yeah, so it's so funny. I, I thought I was funny, but I didn't really know how other people perceived me when I was that age in elementary school and high school, what's funny is I revisited one of my yearbooks mm -hmm. and saw, um, you know, right, hags have a great summer. Right. Um, and a lot of them were like, you're so funny, never change, hope you do comedy one day. And I was like, really? whoa, like I didn't realize that as in high school, I didn't realize that someone wrote that, but looking back at it, I was like, okay, maybe I was just that funny all the time. Do you remember what grade that was? It was high school. It was my, uh, the high school year book I was looking at. So 12th grade. Oh, senior year. Well, it's senior year, yeah. but yeah, throughout high school. Those are the same people, you know. We yeah, right, that you grew up with. Through, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So... so a lot of people we know in our friend groups, they're, they're, we have a lot of funny people that we know. That, oh, yeah. But not every person has the personality for entertainment. Like, you can crack a joke with your friends. They have a certain sense of humor. They can make certain people laugh. But they can't make anybody laugh. Right. They can't entertain a whole group of people at once. You, have, you draw in a big audience of people. Thank God. I'm still questioning that. <laughs> so <laughs> at what point I'm did like, you know I, um, that you had a personality for comedy and entertainment? Maybe when I started teaching. I want to say student teaching, you're thrown into a classroom, it's like, here you go, give it a try. Oh. And I was just naturally that funny teacher. It was just a way that I was like, I'm going to make the students on my side. I'm going to, I'm going to make them think that I'm funny and make uh, the lesson entertaining today. So I think it's, it really, I could say that a lot of that came from teaching, that experience. It really does feel like you're on a stage and you're putting on an act on for students oh, wow. to keep them engaged and all that stuff. So I think I, w I would say it started during student teaching. It's like sink or swim. That's great because yeah. now that I think about it, that makes a lot of sense because you have a lot diverse classroom of different people, different ethnicities, religion, all that stuff. So you right. have to accommodate for all of them right. and make sure that they're all getting the same message. Yeah. yeah. And then growing up in youth too, we were always, you know, standing in front of a large group of people, um, whether it was something as simple as giving announcements to conducting a Bible study. So it, throughout my life, there have been moments where, I, yes, I, I did have to stand up and speak to a group of people or stand up and sing in choir, right? Like mm -hmm. that's the most terrifying thing when you first have right. to do it. But throughout my life, I've had these moments that kind of trained me to then stand at the State Theater of Modesto right. on the stage and be like, oh, okay, my heart's pounding, but it's only because I just finished dancing, not right. because I'm nervous, you know what I mean? Yeah. So So you had that experience leading up to the small things led up to exactly. the, the eventually the big event. Correct. Right. But my first, my first comedy show in Detroit, I was panicking really it doesn't i mean i can have as much experience as i want the stand-up is different it's a different monster it's a different ball game so i've never done stand-up and i'm like okay this is gonna be great it's gonna feel like a meet and greet i'll do some young crowd work and we'll call it a day and i'll never forget my aunt was in the back with me and she's like all right good luck and she walks out and before i went on i did like a body what do they call it a self-assessment mm -hmm. check and my legs were shaking and I was like, oh shit, get it together. Like you're out here, there are hundreds of people out there waiting for you. So the, the nerves are always there. Right. But I just feel like the moment I stepped out, it was like, it's, it's do or die. And yeah. I do really well. I've always done really well under pressure. Mm -hmm. And so it's just something in me goes activate. And Why do you on. think that is? Why do you think you perform well under pressure? I don't know. I think a part of it is because I'm lazy and it's so funny because your thing is your your interviews, your brand is called Lazy, lazy Intellectuals. intellectuals. Right, yeah. I've always been lazy and that's probably majority of the reason why I always ate a chicata from my mom growing up. <laughs> but um, I'd wait. I'd wait. I knew I could do it. Like it came down, like I'm thinking of writing essays for English class, for example. I was a great write writer. Okay. And I would wait last minute because I was like, I'll bust this paper out in a second. And I'd get like A's and B's on them. Right. So I feel like that just kind of translated to everything in life. And uh, I just learned to work well under that pressure. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. So now that you're in the comedic sphere, we have people in our community who, like you, are also very successful comedians in the field and in the professional industry. We have George Janko, we have uh, Crystal Marie Dinha, we have Paul Elia, Vincent Oshana, like I said, yourself. I follow all of them. Yeah, okay. I do, yeah, I got my eye on them for sure. So I was going to ask, did you ever have any of them reach out to you or did you ever reach out to them to ask as like maybe not a mentorship, but any pointers and to see like what you could learn from them early on from their mistakes? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I did. I reached out to a couple of them. Um, I'm not going to say who. I understand they're busy. I get that now because they, they didn't respond, but I'm still, I'm like fingers crossed. They'll sure. like, you know, 
maybe see me down the line and say, oh, cool, this is interesting, maybe see that message. But I love that, especially right before I jumped into doing a stand-up because I was like, I've never done stand-up before. I love a mentor. I reached out and was like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I do mostly funny videos, kind of intimidated by the stand-up scene. Right. And um, unfortunately, didn't get a response. And I, I swear to God, I tell my answers all the time because my my inbox is full of messages that right. I just can't get to. So I don't take it personally, but I'm like, fingers crossed one day, there can be some type of mentorship or even collabs with that would these be amazing. comedians. Yeah. 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 That would be amazing. Absolutely. And so the thing that I admire about your stand-up that you do differently from not only the ones that I mentioned, but comedians in general, is that not only are you doing stand-up, you are bringing one of your characters to life. Oh, yeah and actually interacting with the crowd. And especially, my mom is a huge fan, so I just have to say that. She'll get mad at me if I don't mention that. Oh. But What's her name? Anna. Hi, Anna. Khaida <laughs> Good. Where's the dish dash? We gotta get to get up on for Yeah, so awesome. she sees the way that the moms were reacting yeah. at the Detroit crowd. We saw some footage. Yeah. They were absolutely dying, yeah. even in Arizona when you came out. So... That's something that I admire because you're trying something different. You're bringing not only... Because there's, there's two sides to this, right? Nobody sees all the work done behind the camera, all the editing, all the reshoots, all of the tries, the bloopers. You even post your own bloopers oh, to show how difficult bloopers. it is at yeah. times. Yeah. So not only are you keeping that character behind the camera, you're bringing them up front to everybody to see. So I just wanted to comment on that and, and let you know that that's Thank you. a very tough thing to do. Thank you so much. And I think what's been one of the most surprising and amazing and rewarding things for me throughout this journey is that it is just multiple generations enjoying this mm. like we had an 80 year old woman at the event yesterday god bless her and then we have 10 year old kids that yeah. are entertained by the same content right but i just think i'm like wow it's amazing yeah because they can all see their own mother in exactly. one character exactly. regardless of their age which, yeah. is, which is awesome so speaking of the people of our community this, this is a great segue to the next question i have for you we're a big community and just like any other community it's not just exclusive to us but there we are prone to people talking gossip it's oh. just something that keeps things entertaining right and you even have a series called The Syrian Housewives, where you highlight the stereotypes in our communities, gossip being one of them. Correct. And so you know how the aunties are, the families, did you hear what he said, she said, he did, she did type of thing. We're also church-going people, so there's an extra connotation on women presenting themselves professionally um, at all times, right. being proper at all times. Right. With that into consideration, was there ever a time where you almost didn't post content or create content in fear people would talk about you in a negative light? Um, yes. Something as simple as like a dancing video where I'm just like dancing and enjoying life could be taken and, and twisted and sexualized, right? And right. I think that has to, that you, you, hit the, you hit it right on the head. Like that's exactly what it is. It's this idea of like women having to behave a certain way or hold themselves a certain way to be deemed like respectable yeah um church videos too i grew up in the church but i've had even some pushback with my own family members like hey this, can, this is going to be misconstrued people are going right. to think you're mocking the prayers of the church and i'm like the, i don't want to settle in my comedy What's tough, though, is I feel like I have a huge weight on my shoulders as a responsibility now because so many people are watching me and following me that I can't be reckless with what I post. Mm. But I also think I'm wise enough to make the right decisions when it comes to my comedy. So these are things that I kind of do research on. Uh, for example, the, the choir video where, I don't know if you've seen it, it's about the choir director and how, like, anal he is. Right. And... Uh, and I was in choir practice. I mean, I was in choir, so I was part of a bunch of practices. And I was like, oh, my God, this is just so hilarious and so relatable. Like, how crazy the choir director gets and how everybody's off pitch and, and not singing at the same time. And uh, my dad and I butt heads about it because he's like, no, 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 you're mocking the prayer. And I was like, no, Dad, this has nothing to do with the prayer. It's right. about the dynamic of a church choir. And we disagreed. And I said, okay, I'm going to go to someone who's in our choir, mm -hmm. an older lady, who I always think it's the older heads that are going to have an issue with content. Right. Because that's, you know, I don't know what it is. I mean, it's the old-fashioned mentality. I don't know what it is. Um, but I went to her. I said, hey, watch this. That's it. She watched it. She laughed. I said, was this offensive? She says, no, why? I was like, okay, I'm going to post it. 
And if I get shit for it, I get shit for it. I can't please everybody. And not everybody's going to understand my intentions. Right. And I even, like, left a disclaimer on the caption. Because I was like, oh, if I could avoid any misconception, it'll be through the caption. But still, we got negative comments. So, yes, there have been videos that I hesitate about. And I feel like, as a content creator and influencer, I feel so stupid saying that. But it's true, influencer, though. Yep. Um, I have a, a responsibility to be careful about what I post. So, yes, absolutely, a lot of deliberation goes into what I post and what I don't post. It's conversations with my family, with my friends, with what's going on in, you know, the greater world. And and um, I try not to offend. And I feel like um, if pe- the people that really know me know where my intentions lie. Right. And um, that's not to say that I could use that excuse all the time because the fact of the matter is, it's a public page and not everybody knows me, you know what I mean? So right. they're going to make their own assumptions. But I've come to the terms that I can't control what people think. Mm. I don't want to control what people think. I'm just making content, making comedy. And people are there to laugh. And if you're not laughing, move on. That's right. just how I feel about it. And that was actually something that I was going to bring up, and I'm, I'm very glad that you brought it up first, is the fact that a lot of people listening right now might have a very similar dynamic to you. They might have a very similar upbringing to you and a family dynamic, especially the mom and dad structure, the old school structure. Yeah. And it's not just the Syrians. It's people, anyone who has from a European background, a Middle Eastern background, you can be Lebanese, Jordanian, it doesn't matter. They have very similar structures to you. And I've heard that you've mentioned that your fan base is very broad. It's not oh, just yeah. the Syrians. Yeah. So a lot of people, most likely the audience listening today, knows that about you. And... They may want to start a business one day. They may want to create content, but they also may be afraid of putting themselves out there. But it comes with the territory that if you agree to do this and put yourself out there, that the criticism is going to be there. But it's usually never going to be to your face, right? It's always on social media. Absolutely, it's so easy to just make it. Right. Most people will be proud of you. They're going to give you your flowers. They're going to say good job and support you. Has that been true to your experience? That you haven't received criticism up front? Probably most of it's on social media itself. Yes, absolutely. Um, You know what? We had one lady. It was so funny. We were at church. Go figure. (laughs) And um, this lady came up to me. She's like, good job on your videos. But you use the word chayi too much. Stop using it so much. And I was like, well, thank you for your criticism. Appreciate it. Wow. And it, it, that's that's what it is. It's with a grain of salt. Like, yeah. At the end of the day, it's one of those things that Yom says that's hilarious. There's, It's everything that I do in my videos is intentional. Yeah. Like, my mom sometimes watches my videos. She's like, well, why are you doing that? Why is this? And I'm like, mom, there's a reason for everything. Yeah. It's the way I see it. I've been researching for now over a year and a half. Every comment that I see, every video that I see that I think, oh, how do I make this? give it a Middle Eastern twist, right? I feel like I've been researching throughout this journey. So I know what I'm putting out there. And right. every, I'm very particular too. Every little thing to the smallest detail is intentional. So um, we do, we get criticism. Um, and I take it with a grain of salt. Even for my comedy shows, I actually love to hear it. I'll always ask, what did you think honestly? Or if people hear some negative criticism, like, please tell me, I want to improve my art. You know what I mean? Are you ever worried so, that people won't give you honest feedback because of the publicity that you've gained now, that they won't be upfront and honest with you and they're trying to tell you things that you want to hear versus what you yes. are wanting to hear? Yeah. yeah, well, I don't know if I'm answering your question correctly, but I always say to myself, it's that, it's that imposter syndrome that creeps right. up on me right before a show. I go, am I really funny mm-hmm. or are they just big fans and they're laughing because they love me? And so I always, I always say it's on my bucket list to hop into a random bar in Chicago do stand up and do I make a room laugh? You right. know what I mean? Like, am I naturally funny into all demographics or am I just funny to my fan base? Um, but no, I feel like Sudai aren't scared to hold back. They'll yeah. say it like it is. I don't think they're like, oh, I love her so much, I want to hurt her feelings. Because right. I have, I've heard it from people say, it was great, but X, Y, and Z. And I think they say it out of, of a place of love too. They want to see me improve as well. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't think they're scared to hold that. Especially the aunties. They don't have a problem. Yeah, yeah, especially the aunties. <laughs> the thing is, is that, like, if it were me giving the criticism, it would be because I see you as someone in my community, kinship with me, and I want to see you win because you are representing me in that way. Exactly. So that was that would be a reason why I would want to give you honest feedback. Right. And plus, I'm also 
not on the same level as you in terms of followers and influence, but it's to the point where I always want to get better in my craft. And anyone who's in front of an audience and trying to provide a service wants to do that because oh, you want to serve the people that support you. Absolutely. So I think that's very important. That And it's great that you're already looking for that because some people will get stuck in their own ways and be like, no, I'm bigger than that. No, 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 I, I can't. I, you know what? I don't. I've never been that type of person. Mm. And then to be in now this industry that kind of sometimes feels cutthroat, even though I haven't really done much yet, um, I I swear to God, if, it, if I'm not humbling myself, my mother is doing it for me every day. Mm. You know what I mean? And I, and I want it that way. Yeah. My aunt goes, let me, what does she say, Maria? <laughs> she goes, let me take some air out of your head sometimes when I'm having a diva moment because <laughs> yeah. it's high stress and i got to make decisions. Remember, I'm very particular. Yeah. But I'm like, okay, be particular because you want... You want your art to be delivered a certain way. You want it to translate well, but be careful you're not acting like a diva. I don't like right. that at all. So that you can, that can never be me. I hope to God it's not. If it ever is, you're going to call me and be like, hey, you remember me? I, I'm, I'm the first person. Keep it, cool it down. Yeah. Get, let some you. air out of your, I got you. out of your brain. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great. Yeah. So besides the external events or external voices, I should say, rather, was there anything internal that you had to conquer first i know you mentioned you said okay. imposter syndrome was there shyness yeah. was there self-doubt that you needed to overcome before posting your first content before getting on your first stage okay posting content yes okay so i was a lot heavier when i first started posting videos so of course i was self-conscious about my body image mm -hmm. um but i think I, that was something that i just uh, when I put my mind to something, I just get it done. So I think it was like an overnight thing where I was like, you know what? I have so many great ideas. I'm just going to do this and I'm going to stop worrying about what I look like. And I just did it. I posted the video. And after that, um, it, it was not another thought in my mind. Like I was just posting videos. But the shyness, I was never there. I don't think, I'm not shy right now. <laughs> I wouldn't say so. I'm not shy. That was never there. Um, and it's a personality thing. And and uh, an occupation thing, the teaching, you can't be shy. Right. Right. With the students, especially high school kids. They'll like... They'll eat you alive. Eat you alive yeah. if you're not. I remember like, how I was in high school. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Attention. Um, but no, the shyness was never there. It was a body image thing for me, which I'm working on. I've, I've come, I would say, a long way in, in a healthy way, too, um, in the past couple of years. And I feel very confident. And what's interesting is that... I think it went hand in hand with doing something that I love and I was genuinely happy and I wanted to be better, look better, be healthier and it just kind of it progressed along the same That's great. You know, trajectory. Yeah. I don't know if I'm using the right words here. But um, no, I feel great now. I feel confident. And of course, reading people's messages, their comments, seeing shares, seeing the way that you're positively influencing um, not just people but like the Assyrian community who I feel mm -hmm. like is always so down and and well, I mean, we've had just such a terrible history that I feel like there was a lot happening with our people back home and it, it got to a point where as much as fundraising we were doing you know how it is with the church we do fundraisers we do all these things we feel like from America we're in such a privileged seat and yeah. then to, to see what our brothers and sisters are going through back home I felt so defeated I'm like we're not doing enough I can't do enough and I threw my hands up in the air and I was like that's it and it just, I went into this like depression mode. I feel like seeing, being able to, to put us on a, on a map, even if it's in the silliest way through a social media page, it's making people laugh. That has been the most rewarding thing for me because now it's not all about woe is us and what we've been through in the past, but it's now let's celebrate our culture, even if it's to highlight our stereotypes and they're right. not good ones, right? right but right. Um, it's it's laughter and I say laughter is the best medicine. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not just your, your content is helping people, but your actual events are helping people. Correct me if I'm wrong, but your most recent events, the one that you're actually having tonight, mm -hmm. that you fit me in your schedule, thank you very much again, that you <laughs> are- so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, no, thank you. I'm no happy problem. to do it. Yeah. A, a Syrian Aid Society is sponsoring or collabing with you Correct. and hosting this event, and I believe the proceeds of that is going to our people back Correct. home. Correct. A portion of those proceeds are going to actually the uh, uh, education Very nice. uh, for our people back home, which I, I mentioned yesterday was felt full circle because I quit my teaching job, and I'm like, look how cool this is. Like, we're fundraising for schools back home. And you're still contributing to the teaching yeah. aspect of life, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So it's amazing that you recently 
have gotten to this level and you're already contributing the way that you are. There's not that many people that, yeah. that do that. A lot of people, and I understand why, they selfishly are invested in themselves yes. because they want to reach a certain level quicker, which I totally understand. Correct. It's impressive that you're taking the time Thank to you. be unselfish. I feel like I don't want you to give me, I just touched the mic, so sorry. I feel like I don't want you to give me all that credit because the fact that the, the matter is, I'm still taking something for myself personally, obviously, with the show. But yes, we are we are donating to to a, an amazing cause, which I think is incredible. But um, yeah, I don't know. I always I get I get this way all the time. I hate the praise. It's so weird because it comes with the territory. But like, yeah. I get so like the fun time. I feel like we all we need to do it. We all we all have that obligation to yeah. people to do something. Anything. Absolutely. But it's funny that I say that because, like I said in the past, I felt like. No matter how much I thought I was doing, it didn't feel like enough. And, you know, people get discouraged by that. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, okay. Let me set this next one up for okay. you. So, there's this person in, in the story. Let's call him John. Okay. John, when he was younger, used to be a very loud, outgoing, and he used to make people laugh a lot. Sounds like okay. Me. okay. Great personality, but he, he's toned it down a lot since then. Okay. So, a few years ago, we were out with a big group. And in this big group, I noticed that they were laughing a little too much of what John was saying. I mean, he was making them laugh, but he, they were laughing at things that I didn't think were particularly funny. Now, in our friend groups, I'm known as more as the serious person. And when people first meet me, they know me more as the quiet person. So one day, I grabbed John and I pulled him off to the side. And I, after I noticed they were laughing a little bit too much at what he had to say, and I said to him, hey, man, you need to tone it down a bit. Um, I don't like how they're always laughing at what you have to say. And he goes, yeah, yeah, you're too serious all the time. Lighten up. He brushes me off, and he goes back to doing what he, he was doing, and they go back to laughing. Okay. Fast forward a few months later. We're with a bigger group now. Ooh. And some of those people from the previous group are now joining us again. Sure. But this time, we're talking about something serious. Uh -huh. I feel a tension in the air. People, the emotions are high. I don't remember what the topic was about, but I remember how people felt in the tone of that moment. Well, John wanted to throw in his two cents. He was there again with us. Now, when John opens his mouth, everyone starts laughing. Wow. And I know John, like I said, very well. And he looks at me, and I know he was being very serious was in that moment. To be fun. Right. But because of how he's led himself up to that moment, everyone always thinks that he's joking around. He just looks at me, he gives me the nod, like, I understand where you're coming from now. And I just nod back. My question is to you you're building a career off of comedy. You have a job to make people laugh when you are on. You also have to have a reputation sometimes for your characters to be extra silly to sell that bit, that All sketch right. that you're doing. Do you fear in moments of seriousness that people won't give you the seriousness that you are demanding? Yes. I'm like, I am John. Mm -hmm. I have been John in situations. I mean, like that exact situation that people are like, they've literally said, I can't tell if you're joking or not. Mm -hmm. so, and that's before the remunerated stuff. Um, yes. And sometimes with myself too. I notice that in times where I should really step back and be like, no, take this seriously. Or like, this upset you. You should have actually shared your thoughts. Instead, I default to a joke because it's just easy to get out of it that way. Right. Or if you're talking about in the remina rated sense, um, whereas like I walked into a salon and they were like, oh, we didn't expect you to be this quiet. Like, come on, say something, make us laugh. Uh, and it's like, okay, now I'm like a monkey, right? Like, you right. know what I mean? Like, yeah. So yes, there have been times where I'm like, sometimes I feel like people want me to just be on as right. the characters all the time. And, um, and I, again, I, I I could accuse myself of the same thing when I should be taking things seriously. I'm almost scared of those emotions, so I'll just default to comedy. So yeah, it's something I'm still working on. Yeah. And uh, it's something that I experience with people when I meet them, especially like new people. Who are, and I don't blame them. They're just excited to meet who they see on the screen. Right. So I think that's what they think they're going to get 100% of the time at yeah. any time. So um, yeah, definitely I've dealt with that. I have been John. Um, I think that happened to me more when I was younger, though, and I feel like now that I'm like a grown adult and I'm 30 years old, um, that people do take me more seriously now, and I, I feel like a part of that has to do with like, yes, it's remunerated, it's comedy, but I'm also a businesswoman in a sense, right, so yes. there's time for being, you know, professional, yeah. and there's time for making the jokes and cracking the jokes, but yeah, I am John. 
I related to that so much. I'm like, who am I fighting? At first I was like, who am I fighting? Who's telling John? Yeah, who's yeah, dimming yeah, John's yeah. light? First of all, if your name's John and you're watching, it wasn't, that name's actually not John. It's so not John. don't worry about it. It's just the cover up. I know there's we're not. We're not gossiping about you guys. Yeah, yeah. But no, when you were t- telling that story, I was like, who is Jimming the, Jimming? Who is dimming John's light? I don't like See, the this. thing is, is that he was, it was just our friends. And right. they weren't trying to be, um, the, they weren't trying to hurt him. They weren't it trying. It was more of like, a, let was, me help you understand, read the room sometimes. Right. You don't have to be actually Exactly. Exactly. It was time, John's fault because he, he was always on, always mm-hmm. on. And I was telling him, sometimes you need to be off. Like how you're saying, there's, you there can't always be on. There has to be a balance. There has yes. to be a balance for yeah. sure. And especially when you're on, if you're an influencer such as yourself, people expect you to because that's the only personality they've ever known. The majority of people today that are going to see you are going to meet you for the first time on social media. Right. They're not going to have this face-to-face that I have the pleasure of to getting to sit down with you, talk to you for a long time, and picking your brain. They're just going to see that's that funny girl on the internet. Okay. Yeah. If you guys are enjoying so far, comment down below what your favorite part is so far. Leave a like and make sure you subscribe. Thank you guys so much. So to change the mood and lighten things up a bit, we actually got you something. Oh. So, Steven, if I could please get that. What? Oh my god, what did you get me? It's the plastic one. What so, is this? I wanted to get something special for Yom. We had a custom dish dasha made. Shut up! And on what? it, on it we have Stacy Macy embroidered oh. on the cover of the oh, top part of the dish Oh my dasha. god, this is going to make for great content. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much for your support. If you want to take it out, you can. Oh, so the person that embroidered it for us, her name is Ata Kushu from San Diego. She la, la, San Diego. Yeah, she Yabara. did an amazing job thank on you, it. Thank you, Ata. Did it and very fast. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my god, how sweet. That's I her business deceased. card on it. Cease, you understand what this means. Stacey's bringing the sh- uh, Yoma Dishdasha. That is my mom's favorite saying. We joke about it every day. Stacy Macy. Macy huh? <laughs> yes. Oh, this is such a cute color, too. This is my aesthetic. I don't know if you knew that, but... <laughs> There's a hoodie, you guys. There's a... I'm dead. <gasps> I don't think it's a Syrian style. I think it's more like Moroccan style. Hey, look at something <laughs> like something, but uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Oh, my God, how cute. Thank you so much. Absolutely, yeah. You That's so yours. Sweet. You guys are so clever. Walls and pattern, the design. It's beautiful. <laughs> so Thank I think you. we got the seal of approval. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'll tag you guys in the video and make about it. Thank you so my, much. My, the wheels are spinning already. Great, great. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Back when YouTube first started, there was always those Assyrian funny videos. There was always those cartoons, like the Fobby ones, where they would just dub over yeah. them and put like Assyrian cursor yeah, over like, like a pole. Jerry. Yeah, those ones. <laughs> yeah. And then there were people like Romel Ben Yaminu and then Dan David. Dan David had the hits with Assyrian Parents Be Like. Uh, and right. then everyone knows Romel Ben Yaminu's. He has the song Shota Buta, then yeah. he has Father Son Affairs, the Ubert Uber video, uh, the picnic video, going on a picnic. All of these videos we used to watch as a kid, me and my cousins would get together and we would just die laughing we watch them over and over because it was something like how we were talking about earlier we could relate to. Sure. You are now the go-to for a Syrian comedy. You've earned that right. Those videos are six, seven, eight plus years old. Yes. They haven't been as consistent as you, just something I want to comment a little later on also. How does it feel now that you are the go-to for a Syrian comedy that people can get together, know that if we want something to relate to that we can laugh to, it's Ramina? Do you feel a responsibility to continue this? Does it feel like a job? Or explain to me how, how this is going through your mind. Yeah, absolutely. At first I was doing it for fun. Mm-hmm. And it was quarantine and I had more free time. And then, like I mentioned before, the, the messages, the comments came through and it was like, look what you're doing for our people. or. Um, something even deeper like I lost my mother last year and your videos have got me through this and uh, well, my grandma you, I miss my grandma so much you know reminds me of her this makes me feel so nostalgic so I was taking these messages to heart because I was like oh shoot like I, my videos are doing something that I didn't think it would do for people yeah and absolutely there was an added weight on my shoulders this this pressure to kind of one represent us in a, a good light a positive light and to keep providing for my fans. I think I remember one, at one time I took like a week break. I, I might have been busy. And people were like, where are you? Where have you been? And I'm like, 
oh shoot, like there's a demand for these videos. Mm-hmm. And then the housewives too, like yeah. they're like, I put out an episode that takes probably five hours to film, two days to edit, gives me a five minute episode, and people are like, where's part two? And I'm like, oh my god, yeah. please. Um, it's a one woman show, and it's insane, but um, yes, there is this sense of it turned in, it turned it went from fun to this huge weight on my shoulders this responsibility but it's so humbling to me mm-hmm. like you said I'm the, the, the go-to for funny a part of me wanted to be like really am I like are there others because I have seen some other ones but um it's it's surreal it's surreal that that it's it's gotten to that level in such a short amount of time and um I lost my train of thought, but... Well, let me help you out with it. So, there was a point where you said it's... You did this for a Syrian funny. That you're the yeah. go-to. I You gotta completely remove that, because this is I why. I know, I have a hard time doing that. You are I'll one of fun. the most consistent people doing this thing. I don't yeah. think people understand how hard it is to uh, constantly create content. How many times you have to stop, redo your conscience of the other people in the yeah. room are listening to you. So you're like, I can't be too loud. Oh I my can't. God, the amount of times. I mean, you just sit there in silence and stare at it. Or when you start speaking, you stutter. Yeah. It's harder than it seems. And then when you put out a polished thing, people see it and then they go, oh, wow, she did it probably in one take. Like They don't see all the yeah. hard work that goes behind it. Correct. But you're consistently putting out content still regardless of that. I am. So, I'm very much a, a fan pleaser. I want to deliver to my fans and ask my family. I'm always like a crazy person about it. Like, I think if I don't film one day, I'm like, damn, I didn't do anything today. Mm-hmm. I feel like so hard on myself. And we could have been doing so many other things like negotiating future shows and uh, handling merch sales. You know what I mean? Like, right. we could be doing so many other things. But I'm like, the, the videos are the most immediate things that my fans fell in love with from day one I feel like I owe them that especially now with the comedy shows that we're doing it's taking a bigger chunk of my time away from um, filming the videos I have a notepad on my phone that is so extensive of all the random ideas that pop into my head that I'll sometimes revisit and go damn that was a good idea and I haven't gotten to it yet right. or even that um, being on TikTok and, and seeing the trends that pop up mm. or catching videos that other Middle Eastern uh, content creators are taking and warping. I'm like, damn, I missed the boat, right? So there's a lot going on right now, but absolutely I feel like I need to be consistent because it's just a, it's just a fact in today's day and age. And I, we have mixed opinions about this, about being on social media for such a big chunk of your day. But that's right. where people go for that immediate... Um, dopamine hit. Dopamine hit, yeah. exactly. And I'm a part of that. I feel I'm right. conflicted about this. I think we all are. At this yeah. Point. But that's just the way life is is going now. Yeah. Everything is social media. So I feel like if it's not there, you'll forget. Yeah. And I don't want to be forgotten. People move on quickly. Yes, if you don't do, do it, someone else will, right? They that's do. what everyone says. Yeah. 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 So with social media on the topic now, do you think that I know you don't personally know those content creators that we mentioned. Before. I know Dan. Oh, you know Dan David. David. Okay, yeah, great. I know David. So, but like Romel Benjamin, for example, he hasn't posted videos in a very long time. Don't know the reasons why. But let's say if social media existed the way it does now, back then, mm-hmm. TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, those quick, really quick, sixty-second video type content. Do you think that they, people back then, when they were creating content, would have blown up the way that you are now? Or do you think, no, it's more strategy than just social media, just posting and ghosting? I think maybe more people back then would have blown up. I don't know if it's a matter of like how quickly, Mm. or if they would or if they won't. I think a lot of it has to do with one consistency. We just talked about that. Um, if I posted the first 10 videos ever posted to Romina Raiden and just decided to stop, right. it was funny in a moment, and then it's not anymore. It's not. It's done. It yeah. is what it is. Consistency is key one. Um, and then, obviously, social media, there's a, there's a wider reach. Um, so you almost want to say yes, but I don't think it's, it's so black and white like that. I think yeah. that a lot of work needs to be put into that. And... Um, so I guess a part of me does want to say, yes, they would have gotten more exposure for sure. Yeah. Um, to say blow up, I don't know. I yeah. think that just depends on the person. How committed are they to really making like a brand for themselves? Right, absolutely. And, and sticking with it. Yeah, that, that speaks about the times that we live in now, the tools at our disposal. How, like how we were saying, is social media a good thing or a bad thing? 
it could be used for a great thing like how you're using it right. by getting yourself out there and then in turn you're able to contribute to the organizations that you were talking about earlier. It just depends how you use it. But I think we live in a great time where these tools can be used in a way responsibly right. or how I for example how you're using it. Yeah. yeah. And, and and with balance, like sometimes I like want to go to the gym but then I'm like, damn I kinda of miss walking outside. Like just like being in nature, like off your phone, go out and do yeah. things, right? Like that's hard for me too. Like imagine the people that are sitting at home on their phones watching my videos all the time, I'm behind that screen making them for so much of my day. Yeah. So it's just, I think everything needs to be done with moderation. Yeah, in moderation, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's a double-edged sword, I'll say. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I like to look at the silver lining in every situation and I look at the positive, the positives to that. And it's that we're coming together as a series for something that is feel good. And right. that's the most important right. thing for me. Absolutely. Love that. Yeah. All right. So I'll just do some speed round questions with okay. you. And we can call it the end of this. So you're known for your clean comedy. You don't really curse too often. Not I've too much. heard. Clean a little bit here, a little bit there. You know, not crazy. But... Is there a chance Ramina rated my go or rated R? Whoa. You like e that? Emmanuel. You like that? My mom's about to hit you with her chicata. That's what happened. No, um, I don't think there is. I don't, I'm not that type of person. I, I feel like I was like maybe more like older, like not scared to like crack a dirty joke here and there when I was younger, but um, I was also part of the youth and that shaped me as a person. Like growing up, I had to like kind of refine myself. Like, well, maybe it's not a good, to, good taste to say something like this, but honestly, sometimes I felt like, man, I was just so funny and like quick witted back then. I didn't have a filter. Right. I could say whatever I want. And yeah. a part of me feels jealous of who that person used to be because mm. i'm like damn imagine being unfiltered and like just being funny and if it's if people like it they like it if they don't they can kick rocks but that's not who i am today yes. as a person and so i enjoy and would much rather prefer the clean positive comedy because then you hear people saying well i brought my kids and they love you and that to me is more rewarding than being able to say whatever the hell i want to say if a, if a joke pops into my mind you know sure. what i mean so would there ever be a time where there'd be like an exclusive adult 18 up? Show? There could be. There could be. I think one of, somebody from Australia interviewed me and he's like, well, you made this video uh, of, I forgot what it was. Oh, I made an advertisement for a laser spa, oh, okay. laser hair removal spa. And I had a shirtless guy behind me, granted, because I needed to talk about his hairless chest. And of course, I was being funny, like, should I my local Assyrian news? You like this guy? And I'm like checking him out, obviously. And he goes, oh, he he he, he framed it in a way where he, he almost made me feel ashamed for doing that. And I was like, whoa, buddy, like, like, okay, I get this enough from my parents. <laughs> I need you to draw attention yeah, to it. But it's, again, it comes back to that idea of, like, I am a Middle Eastern woman that is expected to behave a certain way mm -hmm. and not outright comment on things yeah. that I shouldn't be commenting on. So um, I I do it. I, I have videos out there. The Housewives alludes to infidelity. I don't think I'm ever, like, outright, like, dirty joke mm -hmm. or, like, the kid's watching this and the mom's like, oh, don't watch that. All my stuff is pretty censored. But um, who knows, maybe, maybe I know now on Instagram, there's this button that says subscribe. It's one of the right. creator tools where people can, I think, pay to watch yeah. certain clips. I feel guilty. I haven't clicked it yet. I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. I'm like torn. I'm like fighting with myself about like, do I do it? Do I not? But I feel like if there was ever something like that, where it's a different platform, people would have to pay for like behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. Then I would assume, okay, parents would be smart and, you know, like not subscribe, subscribe their kids to it. And yeah. maybe... Yeah, maybe then we can push the envelope a little bit. But I always have to keep my mom's slipper in mind. Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm not trying to have that fly in my head. That is definitely. And I hold my parents' uh, opinions in a very high regard. So that is a, a big um, factor. A big factor, thank you, in, in every decision that I make about my videos. But I'm also pushing envelopes with them. Absolutely. I am pushing the envelope with them like... The housewives my mom hates till this day. I'm like, you know what? All right, it's like fake drama. Like, get yeah. over it. But people love it, so you just have to. She's like, Ava, Ava. Right. right? That's their favorite so, word. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's a, it's all about the community approval. Yes. You know, so yeah. it's tough, but we're we're making moves. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. to see what's in your future. Thanks, me too. Yeah. All right. So next one, be stuck as Yasmin or Yom for the rest of your life in real life. 
Everywhere you go, you're one of them. Everyone Everywhere. knows you as them. You talk like them. You act oh like them. Oh my god! The this is a die. good. But you literally pick the two characters that are like the the, the most extreme on the spectrum. Right. Yep. Okay. Do I want to be Yom with a cheap husband, or do I want to be Yasmin who's spending all her money, her husband's money? I mean, Which Yasmin sounds, better, sounds more fun. <laughs> Yasmin sounds more fun, but Yom's a savage. Right. I guess Yasmin is too, but she's. But to have that face. The lips. God damn. And everything. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do yes, it for rich husband. Absolutely. Yes, All right. All day. Well. <laughs> yes, honey, everything for yes. Me. <laughs> it's Ooh. weird when I say it without the filter on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just the accent at that point. Yeah, and my favorite part is when I post yes me videos, people like, what did she do to her face? Like in all seriousness. Oh, like they actually think you got oh, work done. Yeah, yeah. And then oh, an hour just... later I'll post another video of like my normal face and they're like still commenting on that one. What did she do? It's really funny. So my, my favorite are the Facebook mom and dads. Yes. The comments are so cute. They're little gifts with the dog with the flowers. Yeah. It's like the same gifts. Or incomplete them. sentences with like <laughs> wrong grammar. Yeah. Um, translating their the Arabic, yeah, the the Arabic yeah, comments. Yeah. Oh my god, they're so <laughs> funny. You are the rose of my the life. Rose so of the best garden ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So One last question for you and I'll let you go. Okay. All your characters. Yeah. In a fight. One million dollars on the line. Who are you picking? Who, who am I picking to win it? Yeah, for a million dollars. Oh, who Who's am I winning? picking? Can't be Ankito. He's going to go left and right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, me and got too much work done, so she's probably going to want to like stay away. Not She'll worry about her nails. Yom's mad. Yom's tough, but policemen scare her. Mm. So she could have some like... Her she also has a bad knee. Right. So she might get slowed down. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um... Um, I'm taking this way too seriously. <laughs> I mean, you can put yourself in the mix too, Rami. I don't Maria, know. I'm not a fighter, though. I'm a lover. I can't. I can't imagine hitting somebody. I wouldn't win. One million you know, dollars on the line. I can't. I can't. I can't break my heart to do it. I'd rather be poor. So Ankito sounds like he's runner up. Man, Ankito might be the guy. Yeah. We got some. What do we got? We got options here. With my characters, guys. With my characters. Sound um. Like? You know what? You know what? Uh -huh. I'm gonna say Ninwa from the Real Housewives of Assyria. She's that level-headed, very reserved, mm -hmm. um, and I've actually molded her based off of my aunt Ninwa, who's who emulates the same characteristics. Right. And I feel like she could like really hold it down in a fight if it, if it came down to it. Yeah. For that million dollars, she would do it. All right. Well, yeah. that's the bet then. Yeah. Ramina, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Emmanuel.